Hello, everyone. My name is Arun Kumar. I'm an assistant professor at the University of California, San Diego. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you our vision for Cerebro, a layer data platform for scalable deep learning. Let's get this party started. Deep dreams are made of this. Who am I? Wait, this is not the gong show. My bad. Oops, it's supposed to be a formal academic talk. Let's get that going. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, we know that deep learning is not all around us. From web search and machine translation to computational advertising to social media to e-commerce to Internet of Things devices in your home and conversational assistance to even healthcare and the eagle eye in the sky that is monitoring for everything from wildfires to agriculture to whatnot. A lot of domain sciences are also super excited about the ability of deep learning to unlock unstructured data. The Silicon Valley adage has been AI is eating software. And if you look closely, it's basically these deep learning models that have been eating a lot of these application software. What are they? They're basically these bunch of blocks, tensors, stitched together in this computational graph that are parameterized transformations of any forms of inputs, basically, into any forms of outputs that are differentiable. This flexibility of deep learning is pretty awesome, and it has enabled unprecedented accuracy gains and new kinds of applications we have not thought of before. However, training such deep learning models, because of their flexibility, it's a very painful and resource intensive task on large data sets. If you look around in the ML world and in the tech industry, this is what they're up to. Throw more machines, more GPUs, more memory, more this, more that, if they want to apply deep learning to many things. And that is kind of the formula they've been offering. If everybody started doing what these cloud whales and web giants are doing, we will be burning the whole planet in holy GPU fire. We don't want to do that. There is a pressing need to rein in this bloat on resource footprints, total costs, and energy that deep learning has brought about. We need to democratize deep learning and the power of deep learning to all kinds of users outside of these cloud whales and web giants, through enterprises, domain scientists, and all these others, many of whom are using resources in a pay as you manner, say, on public clouds. This is where deep learning systems purportedly come in. There are software systems to specify, compile, and execute deep learning workloads on any form of data. What does that mean? They allow you to specify neural computational graphs, do automatic differentiation, and run stochastic gradient descent-based training. They compile those specifications to hardware-specific kernels, and they do some compiler optimizations like operator fusion and stuff, and they execute this on the hardware. Looking at this, we notice that a key missing piece when we draw an analogy to data systems is there is no analog of query optimization at scale. And this is one of the reasons why these systems are causing massive wastage of resources on large scale data and for large models and so on. Query optimization, as we all know, is at the heart of resource efficiency in scalable data systems. But the question then becomes, what is there to optimize in deep learning systems beyond just compilation that they're already doing? This is where I'd like to introduce you to the era of multi-query deep learning. If you look into deep learning practice, you will realize that model building is seldom just building one model. You typically have multiple models being executed by the same user. This is for various kinds of reasons. Could be for tweaking the model's accuracy for say things like hyperparameter tuning and how do we even design the architecture, the blocks that I showed you earlier. It turns out this is a very bespoke task in many application settings. There's jump starting. In many cases, you could borrow models from previously built uh, executions, and these are feature transfer and transfer learning techniques. And you could customize your application tasks by subsetting the data and features, doing ablations on the model to produce it, and so on. All of these are basically forms of an overarching process called model selection. And by looking into the structure of this process and understanding how these computations are related, we can optimize for everything across the board, all the metrics we care about, runtime, memory and storage, network communication, energy, and so on. Looking across these deep learning executions to enable multi-query optimizations is, I believe, an exciting new frontier for data systems research. And we as the database community should seize this opportunity by really understanding the machine learning workloads in depth and drawing upon techniques, not just from the database literature, but also straddling the entire system stack that uh, we've been doing in the context of say relational computations for half a century. And this is what we brought to bear in our vision with the Cerebro, a layered data platform. We start with the uppermost layer, which is the user-facing layer, where they specify model-building computations using high-level APIs that they are already familiar with. 
popular ones like hyperparameter tuning to emerging ones like transfer learning to new future ones that are going to happen like graph analysis and machine learning over groups. Under the hood, we are agnostic to what the storage and execution backend is. We can support direct file system access, task parallel tools, data flow engines, and even basic bare metal cloud native infrastructure as a service. Our secret sauce is in the middle layer where we infuse multi-query optimization techniques to translate the IR level computations that are logically specifying what the workload is into physical executions that are optimized and run in a resource efficient manner. One of these optimizations we recently published about is model hopper parallelism. It's a novel hybrid of data and task parallelism tailored to deep learning model building workloads. We are studying a whole bevy of new multi-query optimization techniques for a lot of these model building tasks and also introducing new materialization and memory management capabilities for deep learning systems. The computational graph and the compilation, we are not rebuilding that because we could just take TensorFlow and PyTorch and then wrap around them and then use them as our query execution units. And we schedule these query execution units on the runtime layer. On the side, we also manage metadata and integrate with metadata management tools like MLflow and Tensor, TensorBoard and Tensor, uh, TensorFlow Extended. We also have an explanation engine to help uh, data scientists understand what they are building and also support fault tolerance and elasticity natively. Check out the paper for more details about the system architecture. To summarize, it's a layered platform that brings in careful logical physical decoupling, what we are used to in the data systems world into the deep learning systems landscape. It enables a unified approach to devising novel multi-query optimization techniques for deep learning systems. And this leads to resource efficiency. We've shown that we could reduce runtime and resource usage like memory storage network by even over 10X. Sometimes network costs can even go down by 10,000 X. Portability, this techniques, these techniques that we are devising are applicable to virtually any storage and execution backend and any deep learning tool that is out there like uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch are the ones we are focusing on. And this all in turn leads to productivity, improved productivity for data scientists and deep learning application users. They can focus on the what of the methods rather than the how of executing them on large scale data with large models on different kinds of resources, worrying about infrastructure and systems and so on. I'm happy to report that Cerebro is already being used in practice by domain scientists in the public health space, our collaborators here at UC San Diego on terabytes of data, time series data from accelerometers. Neuroscience and political science domain scientists are up next on our uh, trajectory for applying Cerebro. Also happy to report that Pivotal has adopted some of our techniques into Apache Madlib and shipped it for Greenplum customers in the enterprise space that they are putting in front of. We're collaborating with VMware on some of these uh, future ideas. We've also integrate, integrated Cerebro with Spark and open source that too. All of our systems are open source under Apache License 2.0. Feel free to download and try it out and let us know um, if you have any feedback. More workloads and more optimizations along the entire stack that I talked about are in the works and you can expect to see them appear in the next few years. And also more domain science applications and stacks that we are building for different uh, use cases using Cerebro. I'd like to thank NIH, VMware, and NSF, really different sources of um, funding agencies that have been supporting this project um, across different uh, application regimes. I'd like to thank all my terrific students who have been doing all this work. Supan and Yuva have been leading the charge on Cerebro, building a lot of these uh, top to bottom system stack and some of these optimizations. Sita, Advitya, and Kabir are working on some of these new optimizations that we're talking about that'll come out in the next few years. Um, Kabir is on the PhD market. So if you're looking for students, make sure to um, recruit him. Supun and Yuha will be uh, graduating in the next couple of years. So be on the lookout for them in case you're looking for students in the machine learning system space, um, graduates in the machine learning system space. And that's a wrap. All of our uh, papers, videos, and talks, including industry conference talks that we have presented on Cerebro are available on our project webpage. Please go have a look. The code and the documentation and examples are also available there. Um, feel free to follow me on Twitter and um, learn about the updates on this project. And uh, with that, I'll conclude and I'll thank all of these sponsors beyond the ones that um, sponsor Cerebro. Thank you.